welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The news this week, well, the Pope was accused of making provocative statements about Islam. Vatican security officials have suggested that to reduce the risk of assassination, the Pope should maintain a lower profile, which is easier said than done for a man whose job it is to stand alone on a balcony, dressed all in white with a big cross on his chest. <laughs> His speech led to an increase in security at the Vatican. The Swiss Guard are now wearing thicker tights. <laughs> and they've sharpened their pen knives. <laughs> the Lib Dem conference began in Brighton this week. The party dropped its controversial tax ban to take 50 pence in every pound. Now the only person fighting for that is Chris Tarrant's wife. <laughs> Critics have sneered at the news that leader Sir Ming Campbell keeps a trouser press by his bed. Foggish, perhaps, but still preferable to the large pool of vomit Charles Kennedy kept beside his. <laughs> a policeman lost his job this week after he saw a couple having sex in a car, but instead of arresting them, he got into the car and joined in. <laughs> it's PC gone mad. <laughs> well, I bet they were shocked when they first saw his helmet come poking through the window. Apparently he banged on the windscreen, then on the bonnet, before finishing off on the roof rack. I have literally hundreds of these, by the way. While he was in the car with the couple, he phoned the station for instructions and was told, Roger, and out. <laughs> According to one account of the dogging incident, one minute it was quiet and the couple were cuddling on the back seat. The next thing, a police chopper was circling overhead. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you could be here all night doing this, yeah. yeah. Taking down your particular body of evidence, there's loads of it, right there. Joining me tonight are six of the country's top comedy performers. Andy Parsons, Joe Brown, Robin Ince, and Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Ed Byrne. Welcome to you all. Our first round is called Headliners. I show the teams a recent photo along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. Here's a picture of His Holiness, Pope Benedict XVI. <laughs> So what does P-S-O-M stand for? Say, yes, shouldn't it be P-T-R-O-C-D-I-S-A-M? Which would stand for? Pope takes role of Cameron Diaz in Something About Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Pope surely overdoes moose? <laughs> Please switch off magnets. <laughs> Or, Portsmouth sign old midfielder. <laughs> uh, the P obviously does stand for Pope, I'll give you that. Uh, Thanks very much for that. Thank you. No worries. Worries. <laughs> is, he, is he on a hen night? It just, it just looks like he's wearing, you know, those angels' wings that are all just <laughs> on a hen. It's his last night as a free man, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Maybe in an attempt to reach out, he's claimed that Pope, sort of Muslim. <laughs> I'm quite keen on keeping the women down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the answer I was looking for was Pope's speech offends Muslims. This refers to reaction to the Pope's recent speech in Germany, which he quoted a medieval ruler. He apologised for his remarks, but Muslim anger refused to die down. It's not a very good excuse in general, is it? I was quoting a medieval theorist. <laughs> I mean, oh, you, did you see my bird's ugly? Actually, I was just <laughs> quoting from an ancient text. <laughs> and it was originally Thomas Aquinas who said, <laughs> your bitch is fat. Uh, so. <laughs> you see the apology? He said it didn't reflect his own views. But those of God, <laughs> <laughs> whom I am uniquely yeah. uh, given to. But didn't he, in his apology, start slagging off the Jews? Yeah, the actual text apology was, it wasn't my fault, the Jews made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> but he's sort of, he's been quite a boring pope, and then suddenly he lays into the Jews and the Muslims. He's turned into, like, Bernard Manning. <laughs> Is there, is there any Hindus in? <laughs> you think God's an elephant? No wonder you live in shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Pope is essentially working the room, is he? Uh... Well, it'd be good to see him leaning over that balcony. Where are you from, sir? <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a 79 year old man, though, isn't he? Yes. You know, if he was your grandfather, you'd just go, go on, Grandpa, go to bed. Go on. <laughs> the, if the Pope was your grandfather, you'd want to know the story behind how exactly that happened. <laughs> 
just your dangerous old uncle at the moment. Yeah, he's actually, yeah, yeah. Uncle's as close as he can get. It's not exactly, keep, you know, in touch with. He's not exactly got his finger on the pulse if he's quoting medieval texts to live an no, uncle's speech. I, I you know? think if only he'd watched Peach's Geldos Beginner's Guide <laughs> to Islam, he would have known what he was talking about, wouldn't he? Because that was so well informed. Did you see it, everyone? <laughs> the, <truth laughs> is, the guy he quoted was. Uh, it was 14th century, wasn't it? Yes. But it's a very odd reaction to it, because essentially what he said was that it is wrong, that the Muslim world is wrong to use violence. And the reaction in the Muslim world has been, if you say that it is wrong <laughs> to use violence, we're going to beat you shit. <laughs> The actual the spokeswoman uh, <coughs> Tasneem Aslam, uh, spokeswoman for the Pakistani Foreign Ministry, the actual quote she said was, "Anyone who describes Islam as a religion as intolerant encourages violence," which is really having a both ways. To be honest, there's a, a, a Qatari Muslim scholar who's called in in answer this called for a day of anger. Which I think is not a day of action or a day of, a day of anger. What is it to really is take it? it out of you if you have to spend a whole day just in a mood? You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's for dinner today? <laughs> what do you work having to pretend to be angry all the time? Is it and how do you make sure that women are doing it as well? You know, I hope you're frowning behind that. <laughs> Yeah, that Ed was saying, the Pope doesn't seem to have his finger on the pulse. He's the head of the Catholic Church. They've never been that up to date, have they? They've always stayed a little bit behind on the... Uh... Yeah. yeah totally totally have, have, get... I, mean, I remember the last one. I remember JP2, as he's known in the street. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah J to the P to the I... Because uh, <laughs> he in his last days, he apologised for the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, yeah. They... How old is this there guy? Is, there is. <laughs> He's old, right? Yeah, sorry about that. We're in high spirits. We're all a bit drunk. <laughs> One of the great things that this Pope said was he said uh, that we must all take the Da Vinci Code with a pinch of salt. And you think, well, he can talk. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous, the idea that Jesus was married. We all know that he rose from the dead and flew up into the sky. <laughs> Wasn't the Pope effectively just saying that he thought Christianity was superior to Islam? Yes, he was. But isn't, isn't that essentially his job? He is, he is the head of the Catholic Church. He's not supposed to be there bigging up Islam, is no. he? There's a difference between bigging up Islam and describing it as evil and inhuman. Uh, I think not that job, he did that. He, All he did was quote a 14th century text, which, let's face it, compared to the Bible, was a hyper-modern text. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, but I think we've all learnt, uh, and surely the Pope has learnt, that the Muslim world tends to be... Eh. What are you trying to say now? <laughs> what are you the... saying about the Muslims? Touchy! Uh, is, uh, is it... I think if, you, if you're going to lash out at a religion, lash out at the Buddhists. If you make a Buddhist really, really angry, the worst thing he'll do is set fire to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Where has Jesus turned up recently? In everyone, Dara. <laughs> he's, he's actually he's turned up on MySpace, hasn't he? He has turned up on MySpace, he's yeah. Turned, he's got his, own, he's got his own little page on MySpace now, and it's something along the lines of, uh, you know, you've got to try and spot where you might be able to see Jesus, isn't it? And there's this big picture of, like, a pint glass with yeah. his face on it, and you're supposed to be as if the only time you would see Jesus was after you'd finished a certain amount of alcohol. <laughs> nope, this is the actual picture. See if you can spot the face of friendly Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about that, have you, have you all seen it? Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, I like the way he looks like he's a Scooby-Doo character looking out from behind a tree. Yeah. <laughs> we got who? who's out there? Jesus. He is an angry Jesus. He's angry Jesus, isn't he? Was, His moustache is downturning. It must have yeah. been a point of Stella he's appearing in. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a wife, I'd beat her right now. <laughs> Do you remember that thing in the World Cup when uh, Wayne Rooney turned up in a potato? You think, well, surely he turns up in most of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I particularly love about that is the fact that there is a good mouthful left at the end of that point. That point's not finished, right? <laughs> so there is a There's Jesus. There goes Jesus. Uh... <laughs> As a result of the furore over the Pope's recent speech, marksmen have been stationed around St. Peter's Square with instructions to shoot the second he opens his mouth. <laughs> Winners of that round are Frankie, Hugh and Ed. <laughs> Do 
The next round is called Between the Lines and features Hugh and Frankie. Would you please make your way to the press pit? In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news, addressing the media while the other translates what they really mean. As he prepares to assume centre stage, Frankie, you are Liberal Democrat leader, Sir Mingus Campbell, addressing this party conference. Hugh, you will tell us what Ming really means. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Liberal Democrat Party Conference. What is the point? <laughs> I have many happy memories of Brighton. I came here as a boy. On a longboat in a Viking invasion. <laughs> <clears throat> Questions have been asked about my performance in the House of Commons. Like, why am I so shite? <laughs> I'd like to make it clear that the party weighed up all the options before choosing me as the best man for this job. I'm not a homosexual, <laughs> and I have a fully functioning liver. <clears throat> this year, we will be introducing a raft of radical new tax policies on cars, homes, and those who harm the environment. Don't worry, we'll never get in. <laughs> We've just done it for a laugh. Unlike the Tories, we have a clear idea of where we're going. Nowhere. I'm a man who's not afraid of a challenge. I was an Olympic athlete. At the original games in 463 <laughs> BC. I was pipped in the dash by a winged horse. Dave, Dave, and Hugh and Frankie! <laughs> Points for both of them there. Now we play a round called Wheel O News. This game <laughs> involves Ed, Andy, Frankie, and jokes. If you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge. Our random news generator contains a bank of topics. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, <laughs> anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. The winner is the team I judge who produce the funniest material. OK, here we go. Let's have the first topic, please. And the first topic is... Is that bullying? Who wants to come in on bullying? Ed. I would say bullying. Bullying. A uh, serious problem. Obviously, there's a lot of problems in the world, but it's OK, because wristbands are sorting them all out. <laughs> Them ribbons were useless, but the wristband was on the case to save the day. <laughs> but my favourite wristband is the, is the anti-bullying wristband, because uh, footballers like Wayne Rooney and people like that wearing it, that kids were getting beaten up at school for their anti-bullying wristband. <laughs> and that's just beautiful. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just so glad that never happened to me when I was at school, because I could imagine myself trying to reason with the bully as he beat me up for my anti-bullying wristband. <laughs> no, but that's my... Oh, the irony. <laughs> <laughs> You're only fooling yourself. <laughs> You may take my wristband, but your actions will never mirror the sentiments it represents! <laughs> well done, Ed. Okay, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is drugs. Who wants to come in on that? Andy. So, <laughs> drugs. The Home Office have, in fact, clarified, apparently, how many spliffs you can have on your person before you might be regarded as a dealer. Apparently, the answer is 500. <laughs> That's a fair amount of personal use, isn't it? You would have thought you could have 500 almost anything on you and be regarded as a dealer. <laughs> if I had 500 hobnobs on me, <laughs> I think you could regard me as pushing biscuits. <laughs> Not that I know that much about drugs, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, the current trend amongst young people is to have an upper followed straight away by a downer just to take the edge off it. <laughs> Why not just take a bit less of the upper? <laughs> that, to me, would be like having a Red Bull and then having a Horlicks straight away afterwards. Well done, Andy. OK, that leaves me with Frankie and Joe. The next topic is... OK, living with terror. Who's going to come up on that? 
Well, obviously, that's how my husband describes our marriage. But, um... <laughs> How's the country been since the terrorist attacks here? Well, I mean, when I go out of London on tour, people are always saying to me, what's it like driving around London now? And I say, to know, it's a bit hard to see out of my armoured personnel carrier. <laughs> but, um... You know, I thought it was really important after all that happened to get sort of straight back on the tube and show solidarity with under, other Londoners. So um, two days later, I went straight back on the tube, quite scared, got into the carriage, thought, oh, what's going to happen? But it was brilliant, actually. This bloke got up straight away and offered me a seat, which was fantastic, because I've never driven a tube train before. Welcome, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Brown. I like the way that on that picture there, the dog's looking for something, the bloke's looking for something, it's on the top, the bloody <laughs> idiots! <laughs> Frankie, let's see what topic you've been left with. <laughs> Lucky you, it's the Labour Cabinet. <laughs> John Reid's got a stupid new idea. He wants to make criminals pay compensation to their victims. What if they've not got any money? and get a community service for them. Hey, I'm here to do your garden. Remember me, I murdered your husband. <laughs> <laughs> He's wanting to uh, force through ID cards. Now, ID cards don't mean that your identity won't be stolen. It just means that once it's stolen, you're screwed. <laughs> you know, I've, I've left my wallet in the hotel. I'm going to need new eyeballs and a finger transplant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, boy. I think the points go to Frankie and Ed on that round. Come back. Our next round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. For each chosen category, I read out an answer, and the players have to guess what the question might be. Ed, which category would you like? Uh, I think politics. OK, your category is politics. The answer is nine women. What is the question? What would John Leslie hate to see in a jury box? <laughs> is it what takes up 18 parking spaces? <laughs> is it, is it, um, what can do the work of 21,000 men? <laughs> is it, is it, is it, in serial killer terms, what constitutes a spree? <laughs> What's the half-time stoning entertainment at the Taliban World Cup? <laughs> Is it, if someone asked me, if someone asked me how many sexual partners I've had, instead of the real answer, 60 men and countless prostitutes, <laughs> what do I tend to reply? I think that the prostitutes don't count as women in your mind. They're just vessels for my seed. No, they don't <laughs> He didn't necessarily say female prostitutes. Yeah. I really hope that doesn't go out, because my dad watches this. <laughs> and he's never been that sure. <laughs> Is he going to be disappointed what? by the number of prostitutes? <laughs> well, he's never been sure about the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, he loves this. He loves this largely because you're Irish. Oh, really? That's all it takes Irish, for your dad, isn't it? And he really hates the English. <laughs> It'll be twice as much fun for him this week, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bags or oh, Irish. Uh, this, uh... <laughs> oh, we, we can't even do it in time. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Torinora and Megara. Big James. You two are okay, yeah. taller than I was expecting. You're <laughs> 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 magically gifted. <laughs> Can Is I attempt it? some sports satire? I don't know anything about sport, but I'll <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> what should replace the England football team or something? I think it's the Liberal Democrats. Yes, it is about the Liberal Isn't Democrats. It? If you can find a way of wording this, I'd be very impressed. How <laughs> many Liberal Democrat MPs own a vagina? <laughs> The question I was looking for is what small group of MPs <laughs> were the Lib Dems hoping to expand this week? What Nine. were the chances of us getting that? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't and they what were... do you mean expand? <laughs> This is the statistic that of the 63 Liberal Democrat MPs, only nine are women and all are white. 
leading to a proposed £200,000 fund to encourage seats to field female and ethnic minority candidates. This is part of the conference with John at the moment. What have Liberal Democrats aid suggested in an attempt to make Mingus Campbell appear more youthful? A mask. <laughs> Is it not a mask? It's not a mask, no. Hiring <coughs> corpses to stand next to him when he's on the podium. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're doing all sorts of things. They're putting, they're putting him in, in nattier suits. Or also putting him in young people's situations. Like, they have this uh, of him in a uh, fast car. And, <laughs> and God, look, it just looks like there should be a caravan tied to the back of it. You know? And what one is a slot where you, where you feed in ten pence pieces. <laughs> or you can rock forward and back outside Sainsbury's. <laughs> Oh, That's the kind of shot you always had at Tours World. And in the future, everyone will be driving one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on to other party leaders, uh, what has appeared on Tony Blair's head this week? Sherry Blair's arse. <laughs> <laughs> They're married, it's allowed. Yeah. <laughs> it, on it, on Tony on Blair's his head. head. Yes, the on his head. The number of the beast? Not <laughs> twice. He's, he's got a strange... Basically, he's been branded. He's been given a wrinkle branding by George W. Bush. He has a W. On he has his, a W uh, on his forehead. Yeah, this, this is the photograph. This is what it looks like. That's it. I mean, you can see it closer. <laughs> when he frowns, there's a W on his forehead. <laughs> he isn't a little bit freaked out by that. You know? <laughs> a little bit thrown by Blair is turning into a Klingon. <laughs> in <the midst> of... <laughs> I think maybe he's just got pissed and fallen over on a barbecue fork. <laughs> 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 He's not looking well, though, is he? he is, he's like he's ageing in dog years, isn't he? You know, he, he's going to retire soon, otherwise he's going to, you know, struggle with his hind legs aren't going to work very well. He'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come into power with one of those tubes around him. <laughs> he'll stop him biting at his own mane. <laughs> you know? And why was Cherie uh, in the news this week? Because she hit someone. She, she allegedly out. slept. Uh, a teenager. A teenager, 17 year old. Who didn't notice, he didn't complain about it, did no. he? But no. But someone else who saw the alleged incident did. He was supposed to be doing these um, bunny ears he over the top of her head, isn't it? That's got to be the worst bunny girl you've ever seen. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> that one? He, uh, yeah, somebody did little bunny ears behind her and she playfully cuffed him uh, and somebody reported it to the police and six police officers had to investigate. <laughs> Six police officers is exactly the right number, though, isn't it? You know, one to ask him, you know, did he get hit, one to write it down, one to check the spelling, <laughs> one to look around for black people, <laughs> and two to get the snacks from McDonald's. One of whom then wanks over a couple having a shag in a car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Is, it, is it ridiculous? Are you, can, are you not allowed to hit a 17-year-old these days without getting six police officers on you? Well, you once brought three police officers to my house because yeah, you left yeah, drunk in the middle of the night yeah, and left the door open and then tried to hail them because you thought they were a cab. You know, <laughs> there was That's a light... A true story. There was a light on the roof. What was I going to do? It was do? a big blue light. <laughs> No. It's a true story. I was in bed and a policewoman came into my room and said, is this your house? <laughs> Obviously not ever going to make sergeant, this woman. <laughs> no. So it's not my house. I'm a really lazy burglar. <laughs> <laughs> I found Baby Bear's bed. <laughs> what is the is that the police woke you up, showed you, and then the officer went, this, this is, so this is your house? And you went, yes. And she went, well, you could tidy it up a bit, couldn't you? <laughs> He's at the bottom of the stairs and she's pointed at him. She said, Do you know this man? And I was very tempted to say, No, I've no idea. I've never seen that before. Man. But I was even more tempted to go, Hasn't he been on a Vigot news? <laughs> <laughs> the other point is, I was wearing a tuxedo at the time, right? <laughs> My like... parties are very formal. <laughs> <laughs> I looked like a gentleman burglar, like yeah, I'd left you. a note saying, the cat has visited you. <laughs> It'd have to be a huge window they left open for you to squeeze in. <laughs> oh, they've left down one, one wall of the house. <laughs> Dara managed to secrete himself inside. <laughs> OK, the winners of that round are Frankie, Hugh and Ed. Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could all make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see and the performers come in with their suggestions. <laughs> the first subject is... Rejected first lines for the new Harry Potter book. 
Harry thought of his magical adventures very differently now that he'd been diagnosed as a schizophrenic. <laughs> Don't you realise, Ron, said Harry, with our magic powers, we simply won't need Rehypnol. <laughs> Finishing in the cafeteria, Harry and Ron turned their wands on themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as good as that one. <laughs> I am Lord Voldemort. And I am an alcoholic. <laughs> Grease the goat! Grease the goat! Grease the goat! <laughs> Harry stared at his own spectacles and thought, I can summon a centaur, but I can't fix my astigmatism. <laughs> <laughs> I have earned more money than the Queen. I can't be arsed. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry, said Ron. I, I thought you felt the same way. <laughs> Genital warts at Hogwarts, said Matron. What fun. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Harry wrapped the elastic round his arm and tapped the crook of his elbow, trying to get his vein up. <laughs> Come on, you bastard, he said. <laughs> Something about the spell must have gone wrong, because one of Harry's testicles had turned into a scorpion. <laughs> it was October, and the beginning of Harry's fifth term at Feltham Young Offenders Institute. <laughs> Show us where Dumbledore touched you, said the judge. <laughs> Show us on the doll. <laughs> the next topic is... On helpful things to say in a crisis. I know, why don't we get the UN involved? <laughs> <laughs> Statistically speaking, of course, in these circumstances, most of us will die. <laughs> Kumbaya, my lord! <laughs> I think this 14th century text adequately sums up what I want to say. <laughs> I know you're a hijacker, but I ordered a vegetarian meal. <laughs> I know this is probably the wrong time, but I've got an erection. <laughs> Women and children first, then I'll shag the men and the animals. <laughs> to Frankie, Hugh and Ed. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Ed Byrne. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Joe Brand and Robin Ince. Thank you for watching. Good night. Car cloning and a trick to get free drinks. Notorious scams get busted by the real hustle on BBC Three Now. And on BBC Two Scotland, we go behind the headlines with Newsnight and Newsnight Scotland. That's coming next. <laughs>